There are simple, tangible steps you can take to care for a loved one that's lonely. In this episode, Dr. Varma shares those steps. What can a supporter do mm -hmm. if they see a friend, a child, or mm -hmm. a loved one yes. who's lonely? To show up. To show up again and again and again. And that is giving the person the message that I am not alone to also get help for that person, to steer them in the direction of therapy. They may need medication. Loneliness itself is not a medical condition. Mm -hmm. It can be a normal part of life. Mm -hmm. Just like a person has experienced a job loss or a breakup, it is normal to feel lonely. In this survey, however, almost 50% of people said that they felt lonely, some or all of the time. That is concerning. It's concerning to me that I have to quote you this statistic as being the new norm, mm -hmm. right? Like if I ever get to the point where I was like, oh yeah, depression is not a big deal. Everybody has it. It's the norm. That's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem when you asked me or when I said to you that, you know what? Everyone feels lonely every now and then. You don't need to medicate them. I'm not saying medication is the treatment for loneliness. Yeah. Right? Loneliness can be a normal part of life, but loneliness, when it leads to depression, and if that depression left unchecked goes on, you're definitely going to need therapy. Right. You may also need medication if the person is starting to, their behavior is very concerning, they're mm -hmm. not taking care of themselves, mm -hmm. they're not eating. Mm -hmm. you know, we, did a, we did a whole series on depression, right. and if suicide is an issue. But it bothers me that close to, you know, somewhere between 40 and 48% you know, of people say that they feel lonely most of the time. And, and specifically the youngest generation. That's mm -hmm. really, really, really sad because you are putting a whole generation of people out there who are at risk for depression by the very nature of the fact that they're feeling lonely. Loneliness leads to, I mentioned, morbidity, mortality, heart disease, mm -hmm. physical problems. This is a problem. This is a public health crisis. If you have people who are at risk for everything bad that could possibly happen to somebody, obesity, the blood pressure, the diabetes, the depression, the anxiety, the substance abuse, that is a problem that we need to do something about. Well, and it starts with that compassionate listening. Yes. And to get there, I would urge people to practice compassionate questioning. Mm. I've learned one thing over and over and over doing these series mm -hmm. that the power of sitting down with somebody mm -hmm. and asking a heartfelt, compassionate question gets you so far so fast. Totally. And it's not just, oh, how are you? Oh, I'm good, blah, blah. You know what, mm -hmm. yesterday someone called me on the phone and they go, how are you, which everyone does. And I said, I'm fine. And he goes, I'm doing good. <laughs> I, go, I didn't ask you how you were. It's just been our norm. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's not make that the norm either. Yes. Yes. When I ask somebody, how are you? Yes. I, it's because I'm, I want to know how you are. Yes. If I ask somebody, what, what have you been thinking about lately? It's because mm -hmm. I want to know. Mm -hmm. If I'm asking somebody, have you thought about hurting yourself? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about killing yourself? Mm -hmm. It's because there is a concern there yes. that we need to address so that we can take the proper action. Yes. So compassionate listening yes. happens mm -hmm. when compassionate questioning occurs. That's wonderful. I'm so glad that you said that, Kyle, because so many people don't know how to engage in compassionate questioning. They're afraid of a variety of things. They're afraid of seeming too intrusive, mm -hmm. right? They don't know how to ask or they're afraid because they're afraid they're gonna plant seeds in somebody's mind. When we had talked about suicide and, and supporters, how do they approach that topic? So many parents are saying, I don't wanna plant seeds. I don't wanna go there if they're not talking. And I'm like, you're not planting anything that hasn't already been there. That's Someone right. is so grateful and you had shared with me with, with Kevin Hines Kevin in that Hines, interview. Yeah about, if you want to share that, like he wanted people to ask, and if anyone had asked that one question, yeah. right? Yeah, he, the, Kevin Hines jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge. He survived on his way to the Golden Gate Bridge to jump. He said, if anybody had come up and asked me, am I thinking about hurting myself? Am I thinking about killing myself? Or even, are you okay? Mm -hmm. He goes, I would have snapped out of it. You, we're on the bus hoping somebody would notice you. Somebody would ask you that question. Yeah. Are you okay? Are you planning on harming yourself? Yeah. And the, when I'm reading that, and I know when a lot of people else did, you even say on page three, I didn't jump because I wanted to die. I jumped because I believed I had to. Mm. I believed it was my only option, the only course to take, that I'd die with these two hands. 
from pain. I was wrong. I was wrong. Nobody, and he's in tears mm -hmm. on a public bus. He's in Shame. tears Shame. walking. Mm -hmm. Not one person yes. asked him. Yes. Powerful lesson. And you know, like just the way that we have first aid, we should have psychological first aid. Yeah. What do you do when you see someone on the street who is very visibly shake it up? Mm -hmm. They're sad. We need to have resources. If mm -hmm. you're not equipped and that's fine, where do you point them, right? Thank you so much for watching. You can access more videos just like this one using the links in the description below. And remember, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay up to date on the mental health videos we release each week.